Okay, welcome, hello, and I hope you're all doing well today, my friends. Today in this video, brought to you by Appeals, we're going to do some drawing. But in order to do that drawing, we need a good, reliable pen that we're not going to be worrying about. And here, laid out before me on this paper towel, these are all unreliable pens. <sighs> This is really the only good pen I have going for me right now as far as Rotrings go. It's pretty sad that this is my only good one right now and that all of these, a collection I'm still happy to have, all of these are problem children, right? And there are a lot of different ways that people say you could solve this problem, clean them. You know, there's a you can keep taking the nibs apart further, so on and so forth. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the reservoirs off of these. As you can see, there's a lot of different models here. Anyways, what I want to do today is, out of all the different ways which I, in which these pens could be re rehabilitated and brought back to life in a way so that I can and could once again count on them and call upon them in my time of need when I need to draw lines on paper, I want to try out the ultrasonic cleaner. On God! Now, if you've stuck around my channel for any length of time at all, you won't be surprised to hear that uh, I have no idea what I'm doing with this thing. Apparently there may be a noise. I'll try to protect your precious ears from it, don't worry. Um, so I think what we do is, um, after my very brief research, we put the affected pieces, that is in this case the nib assembly, in here and we turn it on, then we turn it off, and see if it's all better. Power cord. I have about a million extension cords, but somehow it's just, it's just never enough. Apparently one of the things that helps this all to work is that we use this washing compound for ultrasonic and immersion washers, okay? And uh, I don't know if this is the right stuff. I hope it is. It sounds right. Okay, interestingly enough, this seems like pretty serious stuff because this one gallon jug was actually the smallest volume by which they sold it. They also sold it uh, in like five gallon buckets and 55 gallon drums and 257 gallon drums. I will say they're not very creative. It says their signal word is danger. My signal word is Coriolis effect. I think I'm supposed to do a 10 to 1 ratio. So I'm going to do 400 milliliters of water and then 100 milliliters of the cleaning fluid. Wait, that's not right. Is it? They do just sell this stuff to anybody, so... They didn't fill it up very much. Now, as even amateur chemists know, they add the dangerous substance to the non-dangerous substance. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Because what you're adding is more likely to splash. I'm going to add 100 milliliters now. I don't actually know if this stuff is dangerous or if that's just their safety word. Now, before we start plunging pen parts into our ultrasonic cleaner here, I do want to mention again the cool art contest we've got going with Appeals. Click the link in the description. This is what the art contest website looks like, all right? The contest is open for submissions right now. Look at the details. It'll be open to the middle of June. You can submit as many times as you want. All sorts of different mediums are accepted and mixtures of those mediums. It's pretty wide open. If you've been doing art for a long time or if you're a total beginner, don't let that stop you. Go ahead and submit something. First prize and get this, there's two first prizes. Both first prizes get $300. Second place gets 150 bucks 
and there are three runner-ups which all get $50 each. And all those people who win can receive invitations to the Appeals Creator Program, which is where you get your art put up on the website to be bought by other people. And so that's a good way to monetize your art. Or you can just go ahead and upload and order your own designs on Appeals if you just want to have your own stuff on a sticker on your water bottle or iPad or something, all right? Peter's Otherworld Travel Diaries. That's just a place for you to start, okay? It can be anything. That's just something to get your brain turning. Another world could just be next door or the other side of this world, or something totally alien and foreign and indescribable, okay? Make sure you go enter the contest, all right? Now, on the off chance that whatever this is, whatever uh, liquid I just put in there, whatever machine this is, and the ultrasonic thing in here, I saw some diagrams and they're like weird uh, radio waves and there's a device in there and it looks kind of scary. Whatever is going on in there, uh, off chance that that could totally destroy the pen I'm going to put in there. I'm just going to do one or two the first time. And then if it really seems to work, then we can move on from there. If I just lie it in there, it should be okay. I could disassemble it further, but I think the whole point of uh, this ultrasonic cleaner is it can get into every nook and cranny. I'm afraid if I disassemble it any further, then... <laughs> you know, it'll fall through and just land on the bottom. And there must be a reason that there's like that grid, this netting here, this uh, grate, you might call it. I should have probably cleaned it off beforehand. This one is very gunked up by the white ink I tried to put in there. This is actual Rotring ink, but this ink, it, it practically hardens like acrylic paint. I don't know if I'll ever put this ink in my pens again. See how the ink has swirled around it in there. I'm just gonna plop this one down in there. See what happens. All right, I'm gonna put the lid on. Like that is not airtight at all, but maybe that's normal. Um, are there other oh, settings here? Right, I'm gonna turn it on. There's a switch in the back. Temperature, minutes. I really have no idea what settings to do. Apparently, it works fine between 20 and 60 degrees Celsius, and you don't even need to use the heating element because this both of these can be turned on and off independently. All right, I'm just gonna five minutes. Let's just try five minutes for start and hope it's not too loud and kills my ears. I'm gonna hit on. It's buzzing. I'll edit this part out. All right, it's not hot. Let's see what we have here. It's totally black. That's actually a good sign, right? That means all the ink and stuff came out of there. Ooh, they do look clean. Wow, look at those. I gotta admit, they do look clean. I'm tempted to, I mean, I still see stuff coming out of the white one. I'm tempted to like rinse them off, put them back in for five more minutes. I don't know if I need to freshen up the liquid though, since it's all dark and black, or if it'll still work for five more minutes. I feel like it'll still work for five more minutes. I mean, it got the outside clean, but that's probably the easy part, right? What do you say to 10 more? All right. Ooh, nice and shiny. <laughs> smells weird, I think that's just the cleaning fluid. So then I filled these two pens up with ink and of course, Got them all dirty again in the process but the outsides of the pens can be dirty i'm fine with that as long as the insides are all clean and perfectly functional well oiled machines in fact i wish i could oil them they'd probably work better that way but i don't know if the ink works well with oil maybe some sort of pre-mixed formula like you put in lawn mowers and weed eaters maybe there's something there i guess that just means it would be some sort of non-clotting non-drying ink but there has to be some balance there because the ink does need to eventually dry on the paper i just you know you don't want it to dry in the pen
Anyways, once I saw that these two pens were working pretty good, I was ready to move on to the other eight pens. I think about four of them were isographs, which means they have refillable reservoirs, and maybe four of them were rapidographs, which means they have replaceable cartridges. But I even took those cartridges and thought, hey, let me try to clean these out. I could refill them with a syringe. You're not really intended to do that, but some people do do that. As soon as I took that next big batch of pieces out of the ultrasonic cleaner, though, I noticed that they did seem cleaner, but they didn't seem clean like those first ones did. Maybe it was because I put a bunch of them in there. Maybe the machine was already wearing out. Maybe I didn't have the the ratio of water to cleaning solution right. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing wrong, but I thought maybe it's because there are too many pieces in here and the vibrations in the water are getting diluted between all the different pieces. So I decided to, you know, I started rinsing them off and I realized that maybe this cleaning machine um, really should be mixed together with more traditional methods of cleaning. The cool water rinsing, hand scrubbing. I got the toothbrush out and went to town scrubbing away with it. And I also put aside all the reservoirs and cartridges. And I realized that purely plastic pieces don't work very well with this, partly because they float, but also I can just wash them by hand. All right, this seems to work best for, and be, maybe be intended for, these more complicated uh, metal and plastic pieces like the nib assemblies, okay? And that's what I ended up kind of using it the most for, the parts where I couldn't get on the inside, those very tiny little areas with minuscule parts. So I gave most of them a little bit of manual cleaning to go with the power cleaning, and I rinsed them all off, and then I started to assemble them all and fill them with ink and try to get them all working again. Uh, admittedly, I didn't try to get any of the Rapido graphs working because I didn't have any cartridges to put in them. But all of the isographs with the refillable reservoirs, I put ink in all of those and I tried to get them all working. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, I only got four pens total working and three of them were all of the same size, 0 0.35. Crazy. But so I took what I had and started drawing. In my stock of functional rotring isograph pens, I had three 0 0.35 pens and one 1.4 size pen, which is, interestingly enough, four times the size of a 0 0.35 pen, I think, if you do the math. But I don't know if these sizes actually scale perfectly like that. But I think I also somewhere have a 0 0.7 size pen floating around somewhere that didn't make it into this test. But I gotta tell you, this... Mm, this, this tool is cool, okay? The ultrasonic cleaner, I, I have it here, I've used it. My conclusion with it is, it's kind of like a dishwasher that doesn't work very well, maybe. Uh, the dishwasher I had growing up, which my mom let us use the dishwasher, but we still had to rinse the dishes before putting them in, which to me kind of seemed like it defeated the purpose of the dishwasher, but... Uh, like it, it has a purpose, I think it can accomplish some things, it can help... Uh, maybe rehabilitate some stubborn pens that aren't working very well. Maybe. I don't know. Because, you know, I still had a lot of pens that weren't working after this. But, hmm, I'm really kind of conflicted because at a certain, look, at a certain point, I feel like when, whenever I like show these pens on the internet and stuff like this and relay my experience with them, there's always like a million, well, maybe not a million people, but a lot of people that are like, you know how it is on the internet. Whenever you say something, there's like a bunch of people that are, will tell you you're wrong. And I probably am doing a lot wrong as far as these pens go. I, I do admit that I have a rich history of treating these pens poorly, okay? I've been taking them, I've been taking advantage of them. For just usually at any, any point in time, I have one good rotring pen that works while a bunch of, them, a bunch of other ones just sit around being clogged. And I'm just happy to have that one that works. And I'm fine with the other one. Being other ones being clogged because I have one that works, right? And so I don't try to clean the other ones. But here, I finally did put a really good effort, I feel like, into cleaning all of them. I used a power tool. I cleaned them by hand. And is it because I let them sit around for too long? Are they, are they too far gone? I mean, they, I don't know. At some point, it can't be my fault anymore, right? I just feel like this Rotring brand... Ooh, they are, 
starting, I mean, this is hard for me to say, but they are starting to test the limits of my fandom. And I'm a big Rotring fan boy, but these are, um, I mean, I feel like I tried pretty hard here. I bought a power tool to clean them. I cleaned them by hand, you know. I got the pipe cleaner out. I bought a gallon of cleaning fluid, you know. I, I, I used a cool water. I did everything, you know. I, you know, I shared my toothbrush with them. But at a certain point, it can't be my fault anymore. And maybe, maybe they are just kind of sucky pens sometimes, right? Some of these pens maybe are just faulty. At a certain point, you can't just put all this, all this blood, sweat, and tears into trying to get a, a pen to work, and it still not work, and it still be your fault, right? At some point, it's the pen's fault. And I have, I have blamed many other pens much, much, much quicker. Um, than these road rings, right? I, I, sometimes I give up on a pen in like one or two minutes and these I worked on for much longer and I'm still like, maybe I did the wrong thing. Maybe I didn't clean it right or maintain it right. But, but why do these pens get to be so, so fragile? It's like they're made out of porcelain and doll's hair or something. These pens need to be made better. They're made out of metal and, and plastic and I don't know, like hard rubber or something like a million other pens out there. There's no reason they shouldn't be working or someone shouldn't figure out how to make them in a way that's more reliable. It's pretty frustrating, to be honest. I just want them to work, okay? Just like everyone out there, we want pens that work. And we don't want to have to, you know, and, and there's all other people that are like, Peter, yeah, you, you just have to draw. And for every five minutes of drawing with your pen, spend five minutes cleaning it. And uh, I refuse, okay? I know I've been lax on my maintenance regimen with these pens, but just because they have a, a history of breaking down often doesn't mean it's okay to spend that much time cleaning them. Look, I'm probably going to keep using these pens as long as I have a couple that work, or even one that works. I mean, they are, they, I know they're flawed. They're not perfect things. I mean, I think I knew that in the back of my head forever, since forever, you know, since that first time I bought a five pack of them and only, I could only get one of them to work. I just didn't want to admit it, maybe. Now that for the first time I've tried everything that I, that I know to, to try to get them working and they still won't, right? But, but here, here's my conclusion, my ultimate conclusion for this machine, if you're wondering it, it does seem useful. I don't know if it's, you know, ultimately worth the money. It just seems like a kind of a, it could be a, a su nice supplement to your pen cleaning. I did try using it on some fountain pens as well. It seemed less useful on the fountain pens. Um, I don't know, just because there's so much more um, like empty open space in fountain pens with like the reservoirs and um, it didn't seem to be able to get, like if you have like a bunch of colored ink stuck inside fountain pens, it, I don't know, it didn't seem to be able to get all of that out. So I don't know. I've also seen on, seen on some forums people say that like it can discolor the ebonite feeds on, your, on under your fountain pen nibs. I don't know if you care at all about that. I don't know if that means it damages them because I personally, I don't know if I'd really care if it discolors them, but I guess if you've paid a certain amount for a fountain pen, uh, you probably don't want things changing colors. But, no, all right, well, let, me, let me say a couple things about these drawings here. The first drawing you saw, don't pay attention to that one, okay? That was just like, uh, the first drawing was just like a scribble with a lot of straight lines. I mean, I kind of like, I, I took some things away from it that I liked, but that was like a, it was almost like a frustration induced drawing because I wanted to draw that night, but I spent the whole evening, you know, messing around with the ultrasonic cleaner, messing around with fixing the pens, which is kind of fun messing around with the pens. I was all dressed up in my lab coat and uh, my, you know, my gloves and I had all the pens laid out and I felt like I was some sort of scientist tinkering around with stuff. But then the whole night was gone. I spent all my time doing that and I didn't have any time left for drawing. And I thought, no, I set out to draw today. I ended up doing other stuff, but I will draw a picture today before I go to bed. And it was very late, but I sat down and scribbled that onto the paper. It's a drawing composed almost entirely of straight lines, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't really like the direction, how it ended up. I tried to write... Cafe Constantine at the bottom, but I messed up and wrote Cafe Constantine. I forgot the N because I, I thought, hey, this is, looks like some terrible apocalyptic scary thing. Kind of looks like the uh, that scary throne from Game of Thrones. You know, it made up all the swords. It's just some big spiky 
awful structure. But then if you call it a cafe, you know, it's, I don't know, just the juxtaposition of those two ideas. And I drew some little doors and windows down at the bottom. Anyways, I don't really like it, but with a lot of drawings that you don't like, you can still like some things about it and be like, yeah, I'll take these ideas onto some other future drawing and maybe it'll turn out better that time. Anyways, and then the next drawing, uh, also I didn't ultimately like, I liked a little bit better, but was able to spend a little bit more time on that one. But a few things I liked about this one is that I incorporated a little bit more like structured repetition that you might notice with like the horizontal lines and um, I incorporated a little bit of stippling into this one, which I hadn't done too much of lately. Also, you might notice that I used Maker's Cabinet. Uh, I used their their iris compass in there. I think it's like the thing's like made out of brass and steel and it has like an aperture in there. They sent me that a while ago. I never showed it on, on the video, I don't think so. Um, I, I ripped into their... Uh, their pen, pencil plane, pencil sharpener a long time ago. So they have like some, I mean, you know, it's, they're, it's kind of controversial what they're, the stuff they make. It's like overpriced stuff, in my opinion. But I mean, it is cool. It's stuff I like having, but I would never buy it personally, sort of deal. So I have, I have a, I'm conflicted about showing it on videos because I'm like, hey, look at this cool thing, which costs way too much. So I don't know. Uh, it's cool, though. It's on their website, Maker's Maker's Cabinet, I think it's called, all right? Uh, I feel like I should at least give them a shout-out since I used the free thing they sent me. And uh, I think they're doing another Kickstarter right now anyways, so it's probably well-timed. All right, I got to go. My summer classes have started. Actually, they technically start tomorrow, but one of my classes is already... Uh, it's like a history class, and it's already assigned like 100 pages to reads and... and so and like discussion board has opened and I got to, you know, make a, got to start writing stuff already. They've assigned non required reading. Is that like a trick? Is it a trick to assign non required reading? It's an assignment that's not required. Hmm. I'm going to read it. I'm going to go do that right now. I don't know. I'm going to do it. I, you know, I'm here to learn. I'm there to learn, to do it. I'm not, I'm not in it. At, at 30 years old to do it halfway. So wish me luck, everyone. All right, goodbye. Have fun. Take it easy. Let me know what you think about these these pens. They make me go sometimes, but I love them. All right, goodbye.